Hi everyone, this is Jillian from Jewish Workshops and Aish Webinars. I'm thrilled to be joining all of you today and we are extremely privileged to have Chaya Hinda Allen on the line with us. Before we get started, I'd love to see who's joining us and where you're from. So if you could just go to your question box, it should be on the right hand side of your screen, and write your name and where you're from, I'd love to be able to welcome you. If this is your first time on a webinar, you'll see a control panel from GoToWebinar and you should see a little pop out. Uh, that says questions. So please feel free to put in your name and where you're joining us from and any time throughout the workshop feel free to send in any questions you have. We'll get to as many as possible. So welcome Chava from London and Charlotte from Los Angeles. Welcome Zahava from Brooklyn and Esther from Virginia. Welcome Devorah from Netanya, Aviva from Jerusalem. Uh, Diane from Albuquerque, nice to see you. Welcome. Esty from London and Sarah from Philadelphia. Welcome Esther from Brooklyn and Michal from Muncie. Nettie from Texas, Yael from Toronto, Debbie from California, Allison from San Diego, California. Welcome. Zahava from Jerusalem and Sarah from Atlanta, Devorah from Ohio, Bracha from Harnov, um, Tzivi from Brooklyn. Welcome. Mindy from Jerusalem and Rachel from Brooklyn, Freda from Toronto, welcome, Millie from Panama, and Valerie from Canada. There are so many women here on the line with us today. Welcome, welcome to all. I wish I had time to go through everybody, but I think it's going to take up the rest of the day. Um, let me just get to a couple more people here. Wendy from Calgary, welcome. It is wonderful to see everybody here and the line continues to flood with people from around the world. So I just want to remind everyone, try not to log out in the middle because you may very well be uh, locked out of the webinar and we don't want that to happen. There is so much to cover today in this amazing introduction that Chaya Hinda has prepared. Uh, with over uh, with thousands of people who are already signed up, we are definitely expecting a huge crowd today. So please make sure to stay on the line. Oh, and look at Panna just came in. Welcome. It's nice to see that friendly name. Uh, it is truly um, an honor to be hosting Chaya Hinda. As I said, if this is your first time on the webinar, you will notice that the audience is muted, and I see that I just got a question about that. Just the audience is muted, but you should still be able to hear myself, and Chaya Hinda will be coming in on video in just a minute. You'll be able to see and hear her, um, but you will have full access to uh, the question box, as I mentioned earlier, so if you have any questions, please feel free to just put that into your question box. Chaya Hinda Allen has given life-changing workshops to thousands of women around the world. The program she's developed is much more than just a class. It is a step-by-step -step guide for how to change and improve your life from the inside out on an emotional level. Her methods help women gain the practical tools which guide them in a personalized way through a process to bring more happiness, inner peace, better relationships, success, and closeness with Hashem into their lives. Make sure to stay tuned until the very end to find out how you can join Chaya Hinda week after week for a full live online program at a special discounted rate for all attendees today. So without further ado, I would love to go ahead and pass the microphone over to you, Chaya Hinda. Welcome. How are you doing today? Uh, hi. <laughs> can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. If you just go ahead and click on that camera, it should pull you up. Okay, one second. Okay, so this is really exciting. This is really, really fun. It's so wonderful to be together with women from around the world who want to take out time to tune in, to gain awareness, and to actually make transform transformative changes through that awareness. That's really what we can do. It's about understanding that we can transform things when we gain awareness. There was a lady who joined one of the programs and it was a very good job that she only came to speak to me at the end of the class because after she came to speak to me I was very distressed by her problem she came and she was talking like this I end up hello I can't really breathe this was this was really what she was living with and I asked her what's wrong what's going on in your life so she told me that ever ever since she'd had a baby she was under such stress and trauma from the birth that she couldn't breathe. So I right away told her what I thought that she needed to do. And I gave her some relaxation exercises to listen to every day. 
and I wanted her to imagine herself breathing deeply, breathing naturally, just imagine herself doing it. She didn't have to force herself to do it, just imagine that she was doing it. Okay. She came and went to classes over the next few weeks and about a month or two later, everybody was talking about the different things that had started to go right, things that were success stories that they were having in their lives. And this woman said, oh yeah, you know, it's been weeks since I even thought about how I breathe. Just allowing herself to go through a certain process that we'll be describing what that process is, enabled her to de-stress, enabled her to go forward and create healthy breathing so that she didn't have to go through all kinds of deep trauma work. All she had to do was help herself to get rid of the stress and she was able to breathe deeply and normally and the problem disappeared and she hadn't, she hadn't even realized it had gone in such a natural way that she didn't even understand that it had gone until all of a sudden she began to say, oh, yeah, you know, I haven't even thought about how I'm breathing. So I want to I wanna illustrate right away a little bit of how we can understand how we relate to the problems and to the stresses that we have in our life. So let's just look at this little diagram. This is called the eye of the problem, okay? The eye of the problem looks like this. It's a kind of a big eye over here, all right? But we're going to go through step by step. Now, this is the middle of the eye. The actual problem, all right? The actual problem is the middle of the eye, meaning there are real issues in life. She really had a difficult birth or a family member is going through a stressful situation, maybe they're in a, an educational situation that's just a bit too stressful for them, they're not managing, they're not coping with it. Or maybe someone lost a job, maybe there's extra financial stress upon us right now, maybe there's a real health issue, maybe there's been injury or a certain illness, real things happen. But then something else comes into play is, oh no, I'm to blame, um, I, I won't manage this, this, this is not, never going to change, I'm stuck with this, or you fill this in, okay? We build around the, the inner eye of the problem. We build all kinds of oh no's. Oh no, what are we going to do? How are we going to manage? This is going to stay like this forever or just get worse. I'm to blame, I'm such a terrible person, why did I let it get like this, why didn't I do with this earlier? All kinds of terrible thinking, cat catastrophizing, and, uh, and, and guilt, and blame, blaming myself, blaming somebody else. We do all of these kinds of negative thinking, and we start to think, oh no, what, what, what actually is going to happen now? And we become fearful of what might happen. And then the fear, the guilt, the anxiety creates a whole new level of symptoms. Okay, let's just get this straight in front of the camera, okay? The stress-related symptoms fill a massive amount of, of, of the whole eye. So when we look at the actual eye of the problem, the, the problem itself is actually a small percentage of what we find ourselves dealing with. We find ourselves dealing with and having to handle extra symptoms, extra kinds of problems because of all of the self-made stress in, the, in that second level. And so, what we can do is we can help ourselves in many different ways. We can help ourselves with the inner circle. So this circle here, Okay, that inner circle where I've let you fill it in, okay, right? Well, all kinds of thoughts that we come up with, all kinds of guilt we give ourselves, all kinds of problems. We can really help ourselves with that situation, with all of those thinking, so that we don't end up creating all of those symptoms of stress. Now, symptoms of stress are going to be actually the symptoms of the fight or flight response. We're all familiar with the need to respond immediately to some danger and that's called the fight or flight response and it's very important if we need to punch someone or run fast away clearly we need to have all of the energy shunted into our muscles so that we are ready with a response when we need it 
However, if in the middle of the night I'm trying to get to sleep, the systems that are shunting all of the energy to my muscles so that I can punch somebody are not very useful. Unless, I, my, you know, my, unless my pillow is going to benefit from a bit of punching. But really, I want to relax and go to sleep. But my body is working against sleep when I'm living with that fight or flight response. When I am anxious and readying my body for that fight or flight, there are many different hormones that are being released in my body. And they're good hormones because they're pre preparing me to respond to an emergency. Yet, if I'm not in an actual physical emergency that needs a physical response right now, it's going to start working against me. Those hormones are going to make sure that all of the energy in my body is being shunted towards the muscles. So that means energy for thinking, for brain work. Well, brain work is not so important when you have to run away. You might need to find an escape route, but that's the maximum that you need. You don't need to think into deep logical problems or existential kinds of uh, philosophical discussions. You don't have to remember a lot of it. So memory and, and, and present day thinking, all of these things are going to begin to shut down. In addition, you don't need to digest food when you need to run. And so digestion is going to be inhibited. All kinds of digestion problems, getting the most out of our vitamins and minerals. We could make tremendous efforts to eat healthy and even chew slowly. But if our stomach is shunting all of the, the uh, adrenaline all around our food, we can't digest that. We need to have other kinds of hormones, calm, happy hormones, in order to help our body to digest its food and to get the full benefit of all of those expensive vit vitamins and minerals that we're buying. And part of the reason why we're not actually getting those vitamins from the food that we're eating is simply because the body is so stressed. So we're not allowing it to get the full benefit of all of the foods. In addition, healing takes even longer when we're under stress. It's been, they did, they did amazing research and they took a number of groups of volunteers, okay? They had a regular population, regular stressed population, and then they took the primary caretakers of Alzheimer's patients. <coughs> they were chosen as the unfortunate group that is highly stressed. And then they gave all the volunteers a small cut on the hand. And they waited then to see how long does this cut take to heal? And they found that in the regularly stressed population, it took five days for this cut to heal. And with the stressed population, the primary caretakers, it took them 10 days for the same cut to heal. Because of the stress hormones that were in their body, they actually inhibited healing. So this is a major way that we can understand that not only does stress create an additional set of symptoms that we can then be struggling with. But stress can actually inhibit the core problem, that little eye of the problem that we discussed earlier, can actually inhibit that from healing. So in both directions, that middle area of the eye, it can help us to heal the actual problem. And it can also help us to rid ourselves of all of the other symptoms of the stress. But we have to learn how to do this. And so much of our stress response is due to how we're communicating to ourselves about the situation. Rabbi Cheska Levenstein said that a poor man is distressed because he thinks he'll be poor forever. But in reality, he could be wealthy overnight. He says, similarly, a sick person is upset because he thinks he'll be ill forever, where in fact he could be better in the morning. The way we view reality is that the way that it is is just going to get worse. That's the way we tend to view reality. Be real, right? You've got to be real. Get with the facts. You know, don't live in, uh, in cuckoo land. So Rav Yecheskel is teaching us that cuckoo land is believing that this is going to stay around forever. Cuckoo land is not believing that everything can change and that everything is even likely to change. When I allow myself to open up to a new way of thinking and a new way of feeling. We're taught that it says in the tefillah, twice a day we say in the morning in Shachrus, we say that Hashem is mechadesh betuvay bechal yom tamid maseberashis, that Hashem renews the entire creation, every moment of every day always. So as much as we 
tend to think that, well, same old, you know, I'm just getting up and look the same. But the truth is, it's an entirely new world today. It was just totally renewed. There's a constant renewal going on within creation. And so the more that we understand this concept of renewal, the more that we can choose into a mindset that's going to support health. And that's what we're really going to be discussing for Ezra Hashem over the, the time that we're going to be together, for those of you that want to come on board this journey, is how to create a mindset, a state of mindfulness that's going to support health and support healing. And they're two different things. I'm going to set up the background that's going to keep me healthy, but Ezra Hashem in the best possible way. And it's also a mindset that's going to enable me to be able to heal the actual problem itself. So it's, it's about ridding ourselves of the symptoms of stress that we, that we do live with because we live in a very stressed society. And enabling ourselves then through mindfulness, calmness, and happiness to heal the core of the problem. The Gra, the Vilnagon said that when a person is always happy, even if he becomes ill, through his happiness, he will be healed. That, yeah, there might be things that will, that will come upon us, but if he's able to maintain happiness, he can heal himself. He, happiness is actually one of the most powerful forms of healing. We're going to be talking and learning how to do that for ourselves. You're going to get the tools of how you can do that for yourself. You're not going to need to be interacting with me to be able to do it. It's going to be something you're going to be able to learn. But as a Hashem, because happiness we're going to understand. It's a choice. Happiness is something that we can decide that we're going to feel and experience. It's not the result of a felicitous situation. It's the result of an inner decision. And we'll be, dis we'll be discovering how to do that. I found growing up myself, and, and I'm sure that many of you will have felt this, so you let me know if that's true, is that we tend to feel that it's honest to be miserable. And it's, and it's uh, you know, it's real to be a bit down. Do, do anyone feel that sometimes, that, that it feels like this is, we're supposed to feel upset, we're supposed to feel like sad at all, everything that's going on in this world, and that happiness feels kind of fake. Anyone have that feeling? Let me know. I'd like some feedback to see if, if people feel that feeling, that happiness feels like, ah, it's, it's like a superficial thing. People who are real and sincere, they're, they're, they're the miserable ones in life. You know? Do you ever feel that? Yeah, people are writing in, yes, definitely, absolutely, I know what you mean, yes, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it feels like, like if you want to be really like, um, like off in cuckoo land or again, Pollyanna, then you'll decide to be happy, but that's not real. So we're going to be discovering how happiness is real and that this is, the, the other way of looking at things is really fake. As Ravi Cheska was just telling us here in this, this little piece of wisdom that I just shared is that he's miserable because he thinks he's going to be ill forever. Or he's distressed because he thinks he's going to be poor and he's not going to, he's not going to be able to get money. But in reality, he says, he could be wealthy overnight. The reality of the world is that things can change and things do change. And good things can happen to us overnight. Whilst it is true that nobody lives forever, Right? We all know that. Nobody lives forever. But it's also true, and I'm sure that many of you have heard of people that had amazing recoveries. Yeah? And I want to see now. Are there people who have heard of people who had amazing recoveries where they didn't really expect to get better? People who, against the odds, came back? I certainly know many, many of these stories. Yeah? Anybody? Yes, but we, we have yes, exclamation point, exclamation point. Yes, okay. yes. I know someone, Baruch Hashem, absolutely. Okay, this is something that, so the fact that people can, overnight, wake up from a coma, get better. There was a the woman who, everybody was gathered around her bed, they thought that she was going, and then she got better and lived another 15 years. This is something that we have to understand. This is in the nature of the world. And so, choosing happiness is not choosing into denial. Choosing happiness doesn't mean that I need to make real effort based on the real facts on the ground. But it means that I am, I'm going to allow myself within myself to be optimistic. I'm going to allow myself to also choose that there's, there's a great possibility that it can all be better and that I can get better and that this is going to disappear and be nothing. And we're going to understand that choosing into such a mindset 
is going to help us both relieve us of the symptoms of stress and relieve us of the actual core of the problem as well. It's going to give us the best chance of healing. In fact, doctors say that over 90% of hospital patients can trace their illness to worry and stress. And over 70% of hospital patients could cure themselves if they would be able to stop worrying and, fe and fearing. So those are very big numbers. Those are very big numbers. We don't want to be in those percentages of people that create illness through worry and stress. And we would like to be in that percentage of people that are curing themselves through learning how to relieve themselves of worry and how to relieve themselves of fear and stress. Ladies, anyone want to, want to learn how to do that? Does that sound interesting to be able to learn how to rid ourselves of those kinds of stresses and think in a different way? I'd like to hear if anybody's interested in doing that. <coughs> Yes, yes, 100%. I agree. I want to hear more. Definitely, okay. yes. Okay, so I'm going to draw another little diagram. I hope that you like my little, my little diagrams, okay? So this diagram is going to show us some of the elements that help us to create positivity. Now, here's a diagram that you don't understand yet, okay? I'm going to just explain what these elements are. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the second diagram. I'm going to start with the second diagram, and there you'll see what these elements are. So let's just, let's just create these, these elements. Okay, we're going to start with a different diagram. This is, this is the diagram we're going to start with. Okay, so in this diagram, you will see what looks like a fairly stable building. Now, the bottom of the building is belief. Okay, it is a truth that we will be exploring together, that the way that I believe things to be creates the reality that I then live in. And it doesn't mean that because I believe I can fly, I'm now going to start to fly. That's not what I'm talking about. But if I believe that I can eat an apple and it's good for me, then most likely eating an apple is going to be a great experience for me. But if a person is scared of eating an apple, if a person thinks, well, apples are very acidic, you know, they give you a lot of indigestion, I, I don't really want to eat apples, in our family we never had apples, um, likely is that if they would then eat the apple, they're going to create some kind of indigestion as a result of eating that apple. Because the way that we believe things to be actually creates the reality that we begin to live in. And of course, that's a little silly example, but there are many much deeper examples that we're going to be going into within how we view the world, how we believe in ourselves. If I believe I can never succeed, I'm just a loser, I never succeeded in anything, then the chances of me being able to go into a job interview and get the job are going to be pretty slim. If I believe this relationship has no chance, there's no point in even putting in more evidence to this, then the chances of this relationship getting better are pretty slim. But if I never give up and I say, I'm going to make this work, I believe in this, I believe something can come of this, then of course the chances are greater. So it's just a little introduction to how beliefs create reality. If I believe this doctor is out to get me, or if I believe this is a fine doctor, then we're going to have a different experience with that doctor. I know a woman who wanted to have a natural birth after a cesarean. And the Rav told her, find a doctor who believes that he can do it for you, who believes that you can have that. And she went and found a doctor who believed that he, that he would be able to do it with her. And Baruch Hashem, she had a natural birth after a C-section. The Rav instructed her to go to a doctor who believed that he could do it. Because our beliefs are an important factor in our lives. Okay, next. Anyone find this? I just want to know. Do you, do, you, do you resonate with this already? This is something that, that people find has already been a factor in their lives? Just wanted to know if that's something that you can relate to. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Definitely. It is so true. Um, okay. Absolutely. Belief is everything. Um, someone says it's a little too simplistic, so let's keep going. Well, I'm sure we'll learn what else of is going course. on. And the truth is that in a, in a few minute introduction, we can't go into the depth of everything. But what we, when we're talking about general 
rules. It has to be a little simplistic, and then we can go into the specifics of how to make it go a lot deeper. Okay, but thank you for mentioning that. I do appreciate that comment. Okay, the next level is going to be trust. We can only build our trust on top of belief. If I believe my friend loves me, if I believe my friend is capable, then I can trust my friend. And again, this is going to this is this needs a little bit more understanding, but. Let's say there were two friends. Okay, this is really a favorite, uh, favorite little scenario of mine. Two friends and neighbors. They've been friends and neighbors for 35 years. They've been through good times and not such great times. They've always been there for each other. And one day, a new lady, Mrs. Cohen, walks, moves into the building where, let's call them Ruti and Shifra. Ruti and Shifra are these friends. And Mrs. Cohen walks, moves into the building. Okay, that morning, Ruti wakes up and she doesn't have any milk in the house. She says, oh, I better go borrow from Shifra. She goes, knocks on Shifra's door and Shifra opens the door and she says, I can't help you. Goodbye. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Ruti goes back upstairs. She says, I'm going to have to get milk somewhere else today. And uh, fine. So she goes and manages with her milk some other place. Okay. Mrs. Carmen, who's just moved into the building, also knocks on Shifra's door that day. And she gets exactly the same response. I'm sorry, I can't help you. She closes the door in her face. Now, Ruti knows Shifra. She says to herself, boy, something really must have been going wrong in, in Shifra's house today. Like, that's really so out of character. That's not the Shifra I know. I guess I'll talk to her later and find out what was going on. And Mrs. Cohen says, Phew, I'm not going to knock on that door again. This is, that's, a, that's a loony. I'm not going over there. I don't even know who these people are. Now, later on in the day, Ruti meets Mrs. Cohen and says, oh, you are so lucky that you're in our building. Wait till you meet my neighbor, Shifra, downstairs, Shifra, you know, Shifra, um, I'm Levy. Wait till you meet her. And, and in the meantime, Mrs. Cohen is saying, oh, the Levy house? Oh, yeah, don't talk to me about the Levy house. I know what's going on in that house. And in the meantime, she's saying, no, you wait till you meet her. She's the, she is the, the biggest... Uh, sweetie pie in the world. She gives to everybody. Just wait. Okay. Later that day, Ruti calls Mrs. Cohen. Says, I'm so sorry about what happened this morning. You don't know my son fell out of the bunk bed and he smashed his tooth. I had to run to the dentist. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to help you this morning. And here's the cake that I made for you. And welcome to this building. I'm so happy to get to know you. Mrs. Cohen starts to you know, change her mind a little bit. And when that Erev Shabbos Ruti comes along with, with kugels and hot food and she welcomes her. And over the next few weeks, she really gets to know this new neighbor and she realizes that that, that initial meeting was not indicative of who she really is. Now, Shifra and Ruti have this relationship going back for, for, for years already, for, for a generation. But Mrs. Cohen just met her today. So the main difference between these two how Mrs. Cohen responds to Ruth and how Shiva responds is that she knows her. She has a relationship. She has belief in who she is and in the relationship. She believes her to be normal. She believes her to love her. She believes that this relationship is so strong that I'm not going to let this little thing shake it. And so because of her beliefs, she can build trust on top of her belief. The Ramban, the, the Ramban says, the Ramban says that belief is the tree and trust is the fruit. You can have fruit only if you have a tree, but you can have a tree without fruit. So we can have belief in people and not necessarily be able to trust them yet, but we can only trust if we have belief. Now, the Medrash in, in, uh, in Bereshia's Rabba says that one who has belief and trust and hopes to Hashem. He can receive everything, he can receive everything as free gifts without having to deserve it, simply because he is hoping. So we're going to take these words very seriously and take the order very seriously. We need to have belief and then trust and then hope. Now, if you look here, this looks pretty safe. I have solid belief and then I have a nice solid trust and then I can build on top of all of that a pretty big hope but let's look and see what happens in a different kind of a diagram
let's say it looks something like this. Let's say I have a little bit of belief. On top of my little bit of belief, I have well, a little bit of trust. And now I want to really hope. And I put a great big hope on top of my little bit of belief and trust. I want some feedback now, ladies. How does this feel? Look at this diagram. How safe does this feel to you to hope in this kind of situation? What do you think? What are you thinking, ladies? It feels shaky, good? like it's going to fall over, wobbly, not solid. It feels hopeless, uh, right. unstable, not good. Right, right, I wouldn't right. even try. I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even try either, right. And that is precisely why we need to go step by step. And that's precisely why you might have heard of failure stories of people who said, I'm going to this and I'm going to get better and I'm going to get married and then they didn't and then they felt crushed. And why did they feel crushed? Because they were building up a great big hope, but it wasn't based on a healthy, secure base of enough belief and trust. Now all of this, all of this belief and trust, of course this is all impacting in, in this area here. Right? That's all discussion that takes place here. All the blame, the oh no, the I can't man, I, this won't change, all of these, these are all beliefs that add to my stress. And when I learn how to create positive belief, how to create trust in my life, how to create hope in my life, I can positively impact in this area which is going to have an impact in both directions. It's going to save me from the symptoms of my stress, and it's also going to save me from preventing healing to happen optimally. It's going to create the background for real, real health. So in Be'ez Rosh Hashem, in the journey that we're going to be taking together, and I do hope that, that many of you, that all of you will join me on this journey, we're going to be discussing three major aspects, okay, into the power that we have in our mind to transform our healing and our health. The first major aspect we're going to be discussing is how to have the kind of belief that makes a difference. All of these, the beliefs, how to set up these beliefs in Hashem as the one healer. Because when we talk about healing and health, we have to come in with the right perspective. We're not coming in with the perspective of, I'm going to heal myself, I'm doing it, I'm making all the difference, or this doctor, or that research, or this particular way. It's not about any other ism or, or, or the, or the new, newest research, even though we have to engage in the most effective healing that is available. But even as we engage, sometimes intensely, in efforts to heal, our mind needs to be stuck and, and true with the belief that all the healing is in Hashem's hands. <clears throat> that's number one. And that's what we're going to be initially beginning with. And then we're going to be talking about the power that we have in our minds to create the atmosphere for healing, to create this scenario, the scenario, the background, the wellness that supports health and healing. We're going to be talking about happiness and peace of mind, how to, how to live in that state. And again, it's so hard because we do live in a stressful existence. We are, Baruch Hashem, busy, devoted women. Many of us are devoted to our work, to re responsibilities that are work-related. Many of us are devoted to responsibilities that are family-related. Many have all kinds of people relying on us. And since they're relying on us, we, we really feel the responsibility to live up to that. And we often find ourselves torn in many different directions. Not only that, but it's said that every woman is only as happy as her most miserable child. So if we have any child who's going through anything stressful, then we're also going through their stresses as well. And we have to help ourselves in how to be able to deal with that as well. It's a major form of stress. And we have decision-making. There are lots of options available to us. And we find ourselves confused. So anyone find that they, they, you know, they find that themselves stressed during the day, that they have a hard time falling asleep maybe, that they're confused, that they are pulled in many different directions. Is this something that, you know, that women tend to find that they're struggling with? I know this is something that I used to have, have an issue with in all kinds of ways. Yeah? 
Is this something that women, yes. that women feel? Yes? yes, always. Yes to everything that you're saying. Um, okay. I find it so hard to make decisions. Definitely, completely. That's exactly how I feel. I actually think I made myself sick with stress. Oh, gosh. Right. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you can make yourself sick with stress, you can make yourself better with peace of mind. You have to know that that's true. You can do it yourself. If we've ever made ourselves sick with anything, then we can actually set the stage to make ourselves better. So that's very empowering. It's even good news to know that you made yourself sick because you know that you can help yourself to make yourself better now. You have the power in our mind. So that's what the, the main part of what we're going to be doing together is, is really going to be directed to doing, that middle area. Ridding ourselves of the thoughts and mindsets that create stressful living and really creating wholesome, healthy, mindful, happy, peaceful background to our lives, an approach to life which is then going to help us to get rid of all of the outward symptoms of stress and really cut it, cut it right down to size, right? Cut it right down to the actual problem. The actual problem could be manageable if we didn't have all the other stresses around. Now, then we're going to focus on actually what we can do with the actual problem. And there are so many things that we can do ourselves to help ourselves with the actual problem, with helping ourselves to heal. And we're going to be going into and discussing the fascinating, amazing power of the mind to actually create healing. And we'll be meeting, e <coughs> through my stories, we'll be meeting even novice thinkers, meaning we don't have to be professors of knowing how to think in order to be able to get real results. Share with you one story of a woman, again, this was a woman who had no prior experience with guided imagery, with, with any kinds of specialized thinking, but she'd read a book about the fact that the, the mind can help a body to heal. <coughs> Just all she'd done was read a book. And she discovered that she had a breast lump. And she went to the doctor and Hashem, it was benign. It wasn't anything that was urgent to remove, but the doctor said to her, look, I really don't want you walking around with this. I'm going to schedule you in for surgery in six weeks time to come and have it taken out. Now, she really didn't want to go through that surgery. And so she began to tell herself, this is what she told me, okay? Okay, she took no classes, no classes. She just read a book. She said to herself, self, you, you're my body, you once, you once had a lump like this. And it reabsorbed into, into my body, she said. I had a lump, it reabsorbed. And this one is also going to be reabsorbed into the body and it's never gonna come back. She started to tell herself this every morning and every night. When she woke up in the morning, she would say, oh yeah, I had one of these before and it totally re reabsorbed into the body. After all, it came from the body so it can reabsorb into the body and disappear just the same way as it came. And, <clears throat> and she hadn't had one before. Okay? She had not had one before, but she convinced herself, she told herself, she told her body, I had one of these and it was already reabsorbed one time, and this was going to be reabsorbed and disappear and never come back. By the time she went for that six-week appointment, it had totally disappeared, and it never came back. I'm in touch with her. Never came back. So, <clears throat> I like telling this story because... She was such a novice. I mean, she was she like hadn't practiced anything. She didn't have any guided imagery. She didn't have any special exercises. Just a simple person telling themselves, and it disappeared. So, these are the kinds of tools that we're going to be sharing that actually can help us get rid of the problem, even the problem itself. We will be able to discuss ways and tactics that we can help ourselves. And I do want to say right away that this does not replace going to your doctor. This does not replace any kind of medical treatment that you're going to want to, to follow. And I totally encourage everybody to do the maximum hishtandas that you need to do, put all the effort in, because when it comes to health and healing, we have a mitzvah. And you must guard your body very, very much. And that ma'oid is not frequently used in describing mitzvahs. So the ma'id means that we're even encouraged to go to very great lengths to help our health and our healing. Hashem has given us 
a, a beautiful, incredible gift of our bodies. And if, if we would give a gift to our child, let's say a beautiful uh, silver candelabra we might buy for a daughter-in-law, or, <clears throat> or a beautiful silver becher that we would buy for our daughter and son-in-law, if we would buy such a such a beautiful gift, and then we go and visit them, and we see it's dented, it's all you know rusty, no one's taking care of it, it's all black, so we think they don't really appreciate the gift, you know, they're not really looking after it. And Hashem gave us a, be a, a beautiful gift. He gives all these teeth, Baruch Hashem, teeth. We can ch chew and enjoy food, eyes to be able to see. We can't buy these things. We cannot buy an eye. Baruch Hashem, we have eyes, all, all the things that we have, we want to look after them, we want to keep ourselves looking great, feeling good, and it's a mitzvah to look after it, and show Hashem, I'm grateful for this gift that you've given me, and I want to look after it, and show you that I really appreciate this gift, and I want it for a long time, I want to keep hold of it, you know, to the 120 years, so it's a great mitzvah to look after our health, and we need to put in, sometimes even massive investment, of time and money and energy, to get into good health. Having said that, there are many things that we can do in addition to the traditional uh, ways of healing. And those are things that we're going to be exploring and understanding and creating again the mindset in the background for optimum healing. Love, happiness, joy, meaning in life, meaningful relationships, peace of mind. All of these things are good for our health. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's what we're going to be learning, understanding, and sharing in these various areas together. So again, number one, understanding how to build belief, trust, and hope that feels safe. Does this then feel safer, ladies? When you look at this, does this feel like a safe diagram? Feels like a safe way to build up in our lives? Yeah, I'd like to hear from you. Does that, does that look safe to you, to build up like that? Yes. It really does. I love it. Absolutely. Thank you for such a um, wonderful diagram. Absolutely okay. very safe. Yes. Okay. So that's what we want to. That's what we want to do for ourselves. We want to be able to hope, but many of us are scared to hope, and that's precisely why I would be scared to hope too. Right? This is a scary. This is a scary situation. I would be scared to hope in that kind of situation. But when we have belief, and we can build onto that belief trust and we're going to talk about what that means belief what that means hope what it means to, to trust we have to get these definitions down so that we have a clue of what we're talking about so that we can then build them as real feelings inside ourselves once we can make that progression from belief to trust to hope then hoping feels safe and then we can hope for a specific outcome but we want we don't want we don't feel that we're going to be crushed if this particular hope doesn't work out right now I'm gonna. I like it. I'd like to be better by in two weeks' time. If two weeks passes, okay. So I'll wait a little bit more. But I trust. I believe that I'm going to get better. I can hold on a little bit more. If all of my hope is based on a very small amount of belief, I don't believe I'm going to get better. But I'm hoping that I'm going to be better by by two weeks' time. That if I wasn't better in two weeks, then well, you see, I know I wasn't going to get better. So that's why it falls down. So it, 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 when we set it up like that, we understand, right? That makes it clear. It's 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 pretty clear that then I can't I can't maintain the hope in that kind of situation that if the, the hope is not fulfilled I'm going to fall because my belief cannot sustain it so we need to have sustainable belief sustainable trust and then we can build on hopes and again hopes may or may not come true and that's the nature of hopes but if they're safe then we can risk it and that's why we're going to be able to 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 build that up for ourselves we're going to be doing that believing and we're going to be accessing all kinds of tools all kinds of ways to help ourselves create inner happiness create peace of mind but Ezra special are there any questions maybe ladies want to open up and, and ask some questions to them are there any ladies that had a question that one they wanted to address at this point yeah we did actually have some questions let me get okay. to um... Sorry, there were so many that were coming in. Let me find um, one right over here. How do we, 
Um, how do we know how strong our belief and trust are? Sometimes I feel like, Baruch Hashem, I have been working on myself and I've really grown and Amuna Ambitachon, but then I get tested and I feel like a big failure. Okay, so what does a test mean? A test means, let's see where you're holding. And so a test means, this is your opportunity to see where you're holding, this is an opportunity to experience what's where you really are. And so I don't, I, I, I can find that, yes, I have made progress, but I'm still not 100% there. There's always more that I can grow. And so a test will come to show me there's still more to grow. It's okay. You're not perfect yet. We need you in this world still, right? If a person who's perfect doesn't need to be here anymore. But if I'm still being tested, it's to show me that there's still more that I can do. In fact, uh, it's brought down, Rosh Ephraim says, in Shmona Esri we say, Melech, Hashem is the king and the helper and the rescuer and the shield. So out of all of them, helper seems to me to be like a weak kind of a thing. Like I'm the main guy over here and Hashem is the helper in the background. A helper sounds like the like a secondary role. So why are we calling Hashem a helper? So Rasha Freund explains, it's not that he's second to us, but Hashem helps us by giving us opportunities to recognize who we are. He gives us opportunities to recognize our failings and where we still have to grow. And so he gives us tests every now and again, just to let you know, by the way, just want you to know, you didn't really finish working on this yet. There's a bit more you can do. And in order that you should know what still you have to do, I'm gonna set up the perfect test just so that you know that this is where you can still improve in. So it's not that I'm a failure because I have more to go. It's an endless journey. Just as Hashem is endless and limitless, so the Jewish neshama is endless and limitless. And there is endless potential and endless opportunities for growth. So the fact that Hashem revealed to me an area in which I still have to grow is a gift. He's helping me by helping me to recognize that. But it doesn't mean that I'm a failure because I have more to grow. It means that I moved this far. Now I have this, and now I have another option of where to go. It's like climbing a mountain, and then you see the next mountain peak. Wow, look how much more I can climb. There's, I didn't even realize there was more behind this peak. Look what I can do. And one of the Miramashkichim said that just as a person must live with she'ifas, must live with aspirations of where they want to go, but we must also be filled with satisfaction for what I have already achieved. And this is a very, very important point as we try and grow and strive to become better people and to grow in a moon and is that many times as we aspire to be better in some area, we, because we have this image, this scenario of what we would like to be in our minds and we're aiming for it, anything less than that, just doesn't add up. And we, we tend to denigrate and feel bad and look at the, that it's failing if we didn't actually hit 10. But that's the opposite of Jewish approach. The Jewish approach is, I'm so happy that I've got this far. I'm so happy I was able to learn Aleph. Now that I know Aleph, I can go on and learn Bayes. Wow, I have to be so happy with what I already have. So take great pleasure. And be grateful for the steps that you've grown in Amun Bittachon because they're real. Every single step that you have grown in Amun Bittachon is an achievement that can never be taken away from you. It is in your neshama forever and ever. It is eternal. It's an eternal acquisition. That this is, this is the reason why you're in this world for that, for that acquisition. So it's something amazing and incredible and beautiful that we can enjoy and feel grateful to. And at the same time, there's even more. And so Hashem and His kindness helps us to recognize and he says, here, take this little letter, take this little piece of information, just so that you know this is, this is what you can work on now. So don't feel like a failure if you got in this line. Feel that Hashem is just opening up a door for you to know and to be able to have a, more clarity of where you, where you can still work on. So I hope that helped you. That help? That is the question? Great. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. We've got so many questions coming in. Let's get to another one here. How can we build belief before trust? 
Great. Wow. Belief. Okay. You got me started. All right. First of all, there are many different areas of belief. Okay. And we have to build belief before trust. Again, in the example that I brought, maybe that maybe it wasn't so clear, but belief has to come before trust. We can't trust somebody if we don't know who they are. You have to know who someone is before you can trust them. And so knowing is, I believe, I believe that they are trustworthy. I believe they're good. If I don't know they're good, I'm not going to trust them. So how do we build belief? Let's talk about areas of belief. Belief about myself, belief about Hashem, belief about life. And what we're going to be delving into is also belief about healing. Many people might have different associations of what is possible to heal and what's not possible to heal. And how healing takes place, we have all of these kinds of beliefs about healing as well that we're going to have to re reconsider. And so, there are many ways to build belief, and we're going to be discussing some of them. One way is the famous statement, well, it's famous for anybody who's heard me before, is the statement of the Taurus Office of Slanim, who says, He'emanti ki adabe that I believe because I speak. If I want to believe something, if I want to change my belief in any particular area, I have to begin to communicate to myself that new belief. Now, we say things all day long, and we don't, meaning, let's say, as a religious, observant Jew, we might say all kinds of words of prayer all day. And we don't necessarily get to believe them, because we don't necessarily say them with the intention that we want to change the way that we believe. But if we mindfully decide, I'm going to begin to communicate to myself those things that I want to begin to believe. So, let's take this home with us today, okay? We just said that we want to get to believe that things can change. A person might have thought, ah, the way that it is, that's the way it's going to stay. Be real. Being real means just you know, taking the way that it is, accepting it, and then, um, and don't expect things to change because they don't change. But we say, in davening, Hashem renews the entire creation every day, always. We say it twice in the bracha of Krishna. So we might have been saying this for many years, yet we might not have actually acquired the belief that things actually change every day. So now what we can do is mindfully pray. When we say those words, we can say, I want to believe this is true. I want to believe that Hashem renews the entire creation every day in His goodness. And so when I say those words, I can say it in order to believe it. And when I say in order to believe, then it goes in. And this is the process. It's a three-pronged, it's a triangular um, uh, 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 we build up in three steps, okay? This is from the Torah of Azaslanim. He said, when we say something and we repeat it, and we repeat it over and over again, then it gets into our mind. We begin to think things that we've been saying. And then the mind brings it down into the heart. And that becomes an active belief at that point. Again, we say it and we repeat it. When we have been saying it for enough time, with the intention that we become to believe it, then it gets into our mind and is drawn out down into the heart. And says the Torah's office, when a belief goes from the mind and into the heart, then it actually brings down from above a new, a new reality. And we're going to be discussing again. We're going to have to just touch on this very superficially here. But the um, it is brought down. The I have Yisrael brings down a partial nayach. That the way a person believes to Hashem, that belief, Hashem then fulfills the belief that that person is believing in Hashem for. Whatever it is that we believe in Hashem for, it brings that belief from potential into actual. That we actually are participants in our lives, not only merely victims of whatever's going on. And this is really a very important. One of the most important points that we need to begin to understand is that we are active participants in actually the unfolding of our lives through the choice of what we believe in. When we believe in Hashem's love for us, we're going to experience more of Hashem's love for us. The more that we believe that we can heal, the more we're going to enable ourselves to heal. And that's part of creating 
the mindful state that can help ourselves to heal, creating those beliefs. So in answer to your question of how we can help ourselves to believe, through speech, through talking, again, through mindful speech, speech in order to be able to believe more, and through repeating over and over until it gets into our thought processes, and then it becomes a feeling. Then we can begin to feel it. And once we really feel it in our hearts, then we've begun to believe it, and at that point it becomes active. I'll end with just a little um, analogy of, of what belief is like. Babies, we feed babies milk powder. You know, we give, I mean, we don't feed them milk powder because it tastes horrible. If you wanted to feed a baby, you know, dry, ba dry milk powder, dry formula, baby would, you know, doesn't taste very good. But if you take the powder, all of the potential that's in that powder, and then you add the water and shake it up, well, then you have a yummy bottle that the baby's going to drink. And that's what Imuna does, that there is tremendous potential within us to heal, within us to solve whatever problems or challenges are coming up, within the world to improve, within our lives to get better and to succeed. When we believe we're adding the water, we're shaking it up, now it's something that's active. Now we can get the real benefit out of it. Belief creates... The, 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 the reality from what was only in potential first. And we begin to do that through speaking it out, and we can help ourselves to believe more and more. And again, we're going to be Be'ez Hashem going through that process together. And so, ladies, I would really, really love to be able to go on this journey with you. It's one of my greatest joys in life is to be able to reach out to women around the world and hear of your, your, your ideas, hear of the challenges, and be able together to find the way that's going to work for you. And so we'll be, we'll be, you'll be reaching out to me and I'll be reaching out to you. We'll be in touch with each other, with email, and, and, and on, on the phone. Part of, what, of my commitment is to really being in touch with you so that together we can find a way that is really individual and fits each individual. And so whoever's ready and would like to come along this journey with me, then if you'd like to just put it into the into the box on the side here that you would like to to you know to go to the next step, then Be'ez Hashem, we could already get started and 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 set up to be in touch with Ezra Hashem. So Yes, yeah. yes, please, me. <laughs> I want to continue on. Thank you so much. So let me go ahead and explain exactly what I was talking about in the very beginning. We're inviting you on this entire journey of eight weeks with Chaya Hind Allen, live and interactive, just like today's webinar was. You'll have the opportunity to ask questions and get your questions answered on the spot. And all of these sessions will include why is Amuna essential to our health? So Amuna is naturally harder to feel when we're being tested, and I think that that was actually a question that had just come in. So what is true Amuna, and how can we make a difference in our lives by believing? Then the next week we'll go into the danger of fear. Learn how to choose trust over fear and avoid the physical symptoms that accompany a fearful state of mind. How to be worry-free. Discover the art of being on top of things, but not always being on high alert. <clears throat> then we'll move into uh, Hope Heals, understand the importance of establishing a strong foundation of hope in an effort to reach spiritual, physical, and emotional oneness. Choose happiness, find out how to use your imagination to banish sadness and embrace happiness, the ultimate healer. Access your own power to heal. Discover the medically proven strategies to heal and cure yourself through the power of your mind and inner strength. Then we'll learn how to glean the meaning. Your body knows best. Become in tune with your own personal needs and choose the path that's right for you. And finally, we'll end with a full Q&A, an entire session, just for you to get all of your answers, uh, questions answered in an anonymous forum. So as I mentioned, each class is going to be live and interactive. They'll all take place on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Israel time. And we're actually starting this coming Wednesday, February 15th. So not a whole lot of time. We're going to move right on into this journey um, as quickly as possible so that we can start to build our solid foundations of belief and then trust and then hope. Uh, but don't worry if you can't make it to an, a live class. There will always be a recording available to you in your own personal membership area just 24 hours after the live class takes place, and you'll have that available to you for a lifetime, so you can listen to it or download it at your convenience. 
Now, what makes Kana Hinda's community so unique is her ability to help women understand the power of the mind and how it affects every aspect of our lives and how we deal with daily challenges. So, in addition to all of these sessions, you'll also get an extra live class at the very end on the secrets to effective communication. Heart-to-heart -heart communication is the element which ultimately creates the real meaning of our communications, but often is misunderstood and ignored. Learn the secrets in this additional live class to this important aspect of building solid and healthy relationships. Plus, as Chaya Hinda mentioned, you'll have direct email access to Chaya Hinda to get all of your personal questions answered along your journey so that she can guide you hand in hand throughout the process. Plus, you'll also be given a dream book and guided imagery, practical exercises to help you through your journey to discovering your true self and creating a brilliant future. Your dream book is going to come in an ebook format so that you can print that out or download it to your computer and fill it out there. And the guided imageries are all going to be separated um, on MP3s, and you'll actually have a guided imagery for each class so that you can um, learn a lot more about how to actually implement the tools and techniques into your life. And um, Chaya Hinda, if you just want to tell us a little bit about what is guided imagery and how is that going to help us through this process? Okay, so it's, it's about understanding that our imagination is already what is guiding us. So if I would tell you, if I would ask you, uh, what are you going to make for, for dinner tonight? Um, but don't use your imagination. <laughs> then you won't be able to tell me because you can't think about it or picture it or imagine it in any way or taste it. You won't be able to tell me what it is that you're making. You have to use your imagination anyway. When you're making a meal, when you're planning on which, which bus you're going to get or what train or how the meeting is going to go, we already are using our imaginations all the time, all day. And what we don't realize is that if we don't actually understand how our imagination works, frequently and usually our imagination is going to take us into negative territory. Because that's just the way that we're wired somehow. We tend to be wired to go towards the negative. Again, I believe it's because in order to give us extra bonus for choosing the positive. But the, 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 the default setting of our mind is, oh no, now what? <laughs> right? Oh no. What's, there's a problem here. Things are going wrong. Rather than saying, oh boy, what an opportunity. Now, of course, some people are more naturally optimistic and some people are more naturally pessimistic, but everybody can learn how to change their thinking. And again, the important element is to understand that we already are using our imagination. If I would ask you, tell me, what does your living room look like? You're using your imagination to think about what your living room looks like. So it's not, some people tell me, I'm not very imaginative. You don't have to be imaginative. You're already using your imagination in your own way. Some people, their imagination speaks to them in a voice. Did you ever hear your mother's voice talking to you inside your mind when she wasn't there? Wait, where were you, mom? You know, no, she wasn't there, but she was inside your mind in your imagination. She's talking to you, or the teacher that or that <laughs> that said something that stuck with you over the years, or some loving words that are being repeated to you. This is all in your imagination. They're not really there, and you're not crazy. This is normal. Our imagination is already feeding us sounds, sights, ideas, feelings. And they're coming up unbidden, we're not choosing them, and we're flooded with all these kinds of sensations and ideas and sounds that we didn't even choose. And we don't realize that we actually have a choice in this. And truly, this is, this is part of why we experience such stress, is because our imagination feeds us and bombards us with sometimes conflicting ideas, conflicting messages, and then we find ourselves confused. And then it tells us that you're not supposed to be confused. A voice says, you're crazy if you're confused. You have to have clarity. But I don't have clarity, so that I'm, I must be bad because I'm confused. I've always been a loser. And then we start going down that whole thing. But again, that's all the imagination. So the imagination is already at work within our minds, and it's dragging us down. What we need to learn to do then is guide our own imagination to empower us, to build our beliefs, to build our positive ideas, to help us believe in a better tomorrow 
than today was, and also to help us to uh, understand today and its potential, even through the challenges, to help us communicate to ourselves about what's going on in a much more upbeat, happy, empowering way. So guided imagery is really the portal to the inner imagination, to our inner world. It's not hard to change the way that we use our imagination. That's really the key to understand. It's very gentle. It's very enjoyable and relaxing, and it can make major, major changes in our lives. We are a very intelligent, educated generation. Probably the most uh, educated and informed generation of women that there ever was since the beginning of time. And yet, we don't find ourselves able to absorb and live all of the knowledge that we know. We find that there's a big divide between what we know, what we think, and what we actually feel and live with. And that's exactly what guided imagery can do. It bridges the gap between what I know and how to bring it down into my heart. <clears throat> the Sansa Rebbe was once being examined by a doctor. And the doctor asked him, Rebbe, what's the, we know, what is the Rebbe's occupation? What does the Rebbe do? He was giving him a full exam. He wanted to know what, what, what he did. So the Rebbe told him, I'm a bridge builder. So the doctor looked at the Rebbe and he said, you know, this, this Rebbe doesn't look like a bridge builder to me. He doesn't look like, uh, you know, like a guy that's going to be out there with, uh, with tools in his hand. So he asked the Rebbe, what bridges where? And the Rebbe said, I'm working my whole life to build bridges between my mind and my heart. To live what we know. This is, the, this is one of the goals of, of being a Jew in this world, is to connect both sides of the brain, to connect it to our heart, to be able to live and feel that which we know to be true. And that's what guided imagery actually does. It's what Revolbi calls tsiurim, pictures of uh, pictures. It's what Rav Desla calls tsiuri halev, pictures of the heart. Apparently, Rav Yisrael Salanta created his own kind of guided imageries, ways that, meaning to guide our mind to think certain thoughts in order to arouse certain feelings. In fact, all of tefillah, davening, is supposed to be an experience of the heart. It's supposed to be an experience of guiding my mind to image and think and draw to mind mindfully scenarios in order to create feeling, in order to create love of Hashem, in order to create happiness, in order to create feelings of, of faith and trust, that's why it's called a Vodashabalev, service of the heart. It's a service to get my heart to feel that which my mind knows. That's what the avod of tefillah is. And so all through Chazal, we are encouraged to use our mind in positive ways. This is not something that was just discovered in the last few generations. This is something that, that, that is all through time. All, and we're going to bring examples of how all through Tanakh and Chumash, the, the, our our voice use their use their minds. In fact, it's brought down with Simchazizel Breda asked, "What was the difference between the Gedolim of previous generations and ourselves? How were they greater than us?" And he answers, "Because they understood the power of the imagination and how to harness it." And so, through even very short and the guided images that we're going to be doing Be'ez HaShem together in the course of, uh, of, of the journey we'll be taking Be'ez HaShem are going to be between 10 minutes and 20, and 20 minutes each, each time. It doesn't take a long time, but they can powerfully affect the way that we feel. And when we, when we get into the habit of doing them, the benefits of actually just listening to guided imagery on stress relief have been documented by medical communities around the world. So there's a twofold benefit to the guided imagery, actually. One is just the benefit, the physical benefit of spending some time training our mind to relax. And there's tremendous benefit to the mind and to the physical body has been noted just from that alone. And then the actual process of guiding our minds to think and feel certain things, the positive things that we want, we can help ourselves to feel happiness we can help ourselves to feel calm. We can help ourselves to feel healthy through guiding our minds. There's obviously there's much more to talk about this, but it's a it's a practical means to help ourselves to feel information that we know in a gentle and elegant way. Perfect. Thank you so much. You definitely said it better than I could ever explain it. So thank you.
Okay, let me keep going. I know that, I'm sorry, thanks for being so patient, everybody. I hope that that did help explain a little bit better what guided imagery is and how it's really going to impact our journey. Yeah. You'll also, in addition to all of those things, get an additional class on the seven ways to touch eternity. Judaism is a way of life that is in constant touch with eternity. Through mitzvot that affect our thoughts, speech, and actions, we create effects for eternity. So discover seven ways we touch our own inner selves in a way that will last forever. <laughs> Plus, as Pesach is coming around the corner, experience a positive Pesach. Take a few minutes to look forward to what a calm, happy person you can be before Pesach arrives. When we focus on the work, exhaustion, and frustration that can be a part of Pesach preparation, we feel worn out before we even start. But when we've learned to focus on the accomplishment we can feel, the liberation we can experience, and the satisfaction we can live with, we can truly have a positive Pesach. So you can look forward to that MP3 as well. And finally, an extra seat in the course for a family member or friend, not only giving you the opportunity to share this course, but also the ability to embark on this journey in cooperation with a loved one. So as you can see, Chaya Hinda will be walking you through all aspects of your mind-body connection and has included her unique guided imageries to bring it all to life. Plus, you'll have one-on-one -on -one support throughout this program and we'll have the unique opportunity to get your personal questions answered that you haven't been able to get answered previously. But most importantly, by investing in yourself now, you'll discover how to eliminate stress and its physical, emotional, and spiritual side effects by using guided imagery to access your inner power to heal. You'll be able to build a healthy and re reliable progression of belief, trust, and hope inside yourself and embrace a newfound peace of mind. Expand your self-awareness, allow your energy to flow freely, and get unstuck from toxic emotions like resentment, self-pity, and regret. You'll be able to stop worrying about the things you can't control, create a new reality of vibrant health and well-being, and finally have the energy to enjoy life. And overcome your worries and fears and develop a solid sense of security by opening your mind to trust, hope, and healing. We have never offered an opportunity quite like this before, but we listened to all of our members' requests and have created this amazing online community for women from around the world to come and get the guidance you need and deserve alongside a one-of-a-kind mentor. Plus, to make it accessible to everyone, we are offering an extremely huge discount today and offering payment plan options when you register. So you can either get the entire workshop series for only $3.97, or you can enjoy the entire course, including all of the additional bonus classes, by becoming a Platinum member for just $4.97. But as I mentioned today in the beginning of the class, because you decided to attend today and take this first step on your journey, just for the next 24 hours, you'll get an additional $50 discount on both programs. So you can either become a basic member for $347 or a platinum member for $447 just by getting in today. So I'm going to go ahead and put the link right in your um, question box. There it is. It's www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash mind. You can go ahead and actually copy that right out of uh, the question box and put it into your new browser so you can continue to listen. We're going to go through some questions. We've actually got um, another member would love to tell her story of how she was able to join Chaya Hinda in the past so you can hear some of that. But you can also secure your spot by going right there and I'll put the link right up here on our screen. It's www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash mind. So in case you're listening in over the phone, you have that um, website to go to. And if you're having any trouble registering on your own, please feel free to come right back uh, to the question box and put your name and your telephone number into the chat box. I will have someone give you a call as soon as possible so that we can help you register and make sure that you can start with us again on this journey next Wednesday, February 15th. Um, also, once you're in and you've registered, I'd love for you to just be able to come in and um, put your first name and the words, I'm in. I would like to be able to welcome you to the community. So uh, once you've already gone and registered, just come on over and write your first name and the words, I'm in. Let me get to some of the questions that are also coming through here. 
And yes, as I mentioned, there are payment plan options available. So when you go to jewishworkshops.com forward slash mind, you'll be redirected um, when you'll see a register now button. You can choose whether you want to become a basic member or a platinum member. And you'll be given the opportunity to register now. Just click on that button and you'll go redirected to a registration page, which will give you all of your payment plan options. So you don't necessarily need to pay all of it up front. If it's easier for you, you can go ahead and um, get it in a smaller um, payment plan option per month. Um, okay, so Sarah, in answer to your question, the live classes are all going to take place on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Israel time. And again, that starts next Wednesday, February 15th, but if you can't make it to these live classes, and it's going to be eight weeks worth of classes, if you can't make it to those, um, please remember that you will have recordings available to you. They're all downloadable. You can either sit in front of your computer and listen to them, or you can download it to any device that's convenient for you. And uh, then you'll be able to listen to it on the road, any time that is good for you. Plus, the additional classes when you become a Platinum member, you'll get um, Seven Ways to Touch Eternity and Positive Pesach. Those are MP3s and those are pre-recorded classes, so those will be available to you immediately. And the Secrets to Effective Communication is an additional live class uh, that isn't even included in the eight weeks. It's additional after that, but that will also be recorded, so just in case you can't make that live one, you'll also have that available to you. Let me see any other questions that are coming in. Welcome, Esther. I'm so glad to see that you've joined already. Wonderful. Um, I would love to remind everyone, if you can, um, come back and just let me know that you're in. Again, I'd love to be able to welcome you. We are always happy to have people in uh, the community. We are like one big family here, so please just come on back. Even if you want to write your initials, that's good too. I would just love to be able to welcome you. Um, is this the program the same as Chai Hinda's regular program or is it new? This is actually a different program and maybe Chai Hinda, you can come and explain um, a little bit about how this is different than the previous programs you've given. Yeah, um, no, it's going to be, it's going to be a, li a little different. I'll tell you that in the regular program, I devote one class to healing. And that's not very much time at all. It's just, that's just one class. So here we've taken, um, and really the, I, I was feeling a little bit that it wasn't enough time to really do that topic justice at all in just one class. So what we're going to be doing here is expanding a lot on, on, on the ideas that I touched upon in that one class on healing. Here we're going to be really expanding on it and so that it will fill these, these eight classes with the understanding of this is, these are all different ways that I can access the inner power that Hashem has given within my body to heal, within my mind to heal. And I mean, our approach is how to use all of the different tools at our disposal to create the healthiest me that I can. So it's not the same as the program, even though, if you know me, I can't, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the same kinds of ideas. You see, I'm talking about belief, I'm talking about trust and hope. I'm going to be talking about a lot of, a lot of similar ideas, but we're going to be using them as an approach towards creating healing. That's going and to, to creating a stress-free life, to creating peace of mind. And with that as, as, as the guide, and that's the goal, it's going to come out a little different and all the guided imageries are also new they're not the same guided imageries and we only have one guided imagery for healing in in the in the big series and here we have eight different ones one that comes with every class so there's going to, there's definitely a lot more new stuff in this series now yeah thank you so much that was actually the question came in from Janet Esses so she sends her regards and just Yay. wanted to make sure that, <laughs> that this is a different program than the one that she's already taken that's so sweet <laughs> Okay, good. Thank you so much for answering that. I'm sure there are plenty of other women on the line who have taken programs with Chaya Hind in the past, so we wanted to make sure that that was very clear, so thank you so much. Um, I want to welcome Allison. Welcome. You're in. Wonderful. And I'm sorry, I just missed somebody else up here. Welcome, AG. Excellent. Glad to have you. Welcome, Chevy. Welcome, Sarah. Wonderful to have everybody. This is so great. 
please come back and continue to let me know when you're in. And if you are having any questions or trouble registering, I did notice somebody also just wrote in. Um, the filter on her computer wasn't letting her access um, the www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash mind. And I'm going to go actually and put that in there again for you in case you need that. If you're having trouble with um, getting into that site, sometimes it's really hard because of all of the traffic going in at once and everybody trying to register all at the same time, uh, which is great. But if you're having any trouble, please just come on back and uh, let us know your your name and your phone number so that we can give a, you a call and we'll help you register right over the phone. Um, Chaya Hinda, before I get to some of these other questions, we've actually had uh, Samantha being extremely patient and we had a couple other women asking, can we look at those eye diagrams one more time? You showed them in the beginning and it was a really great concept, but we wanted, <laughs> we wanted to see them again and just understand that entire idea. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so here's the eye of the problem. Okay, the eye of the problem. So now that we've talked about it, the, the actual problem is this. The problem is, is, is represented by this small circle. And then in this part of the eye, we come up with negative beliefs. We come up with the stress based on our negative beliefs, they can't cage, it's not gonna get better, I'm so bad, I made, I, I made such a mess, we can never manage. We create all of this stress, worry, fear, uh, low self-esteem about myself, okay, that sits right here. And then, that area, these beliefs there impact on symptoms of stress, on this whole area then, the, the, the whole rest of the eye are stress symptoms such as shortness of breath, palpitations, um, lack of digestion, I can't digest my food, I can't sleep, I have headaches, um, I have back pain. All of these are the extra symptoms of stress. Most of these, and that's why when, they say, when, when the doctors are saying that 90% of people can trace their problems to worry and fear that we're talking about all of this all of this was not the actual problem the actual problem was maybe an injury or a, a brief illness or um, or let's say it's a financial problem that's a real issue as so again we're not denying that there are real issues out there the real issue is the center of it all but then we build on that with the stress and the stress the emotions that we're feeling in this area create more symptoms. They create the they create all this other pain and symptoms, lack of lack of sleep, lack of digestion, uh, you, you know, all, all kinds of irritability and, and all these different kinds of pains. And then if when, when we learn in this area here to change the way that we think, to change the way that we believe, our beliefs are going to be sitting here, creating positive feelings that then all of that is going to disappear. It's all going to be gone. So we're just left with the, let's just color it in so that you can identify it again. Okay, then we're left with the actual problem. It's just shrunk down to size. And then we have the tools to actually help us to even shrink the problem even more. Because as we know, that in stressed people, it will take 10 days to heal something that a non-stressed person can heal in five. So we're going to give ourselves the optimum chance for healing as well as enabling ourselves to access the power of our mind in, 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 in aiming towards healing and drawing ourselves closer and closer to really healing from, from a problem. But as was a shame. Is that, is that clearer? Yes, thank you so much. That was much clearer. And okay. <laughs> Samantha says, thank you. Yes. So I'm glad that we got back to that. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Um, as everyone is signing up and securing their spots at this additional uh, special discounted rate for just today, I really wanted to just play this, um, the beautiful words that Dina wanted to share. She couldn't be here live, so she sent in a recording. And it was so touching, I had to play it for you. Uh, as And I'm going to go ahead, actually, and put the link again right back into your chat box. If you are having um, trouble still, I'm seeing people are writing in again. If you're still having trouble registering, please just put your name and telephone number in the chat box. Otherwise, come on in and tell us that you have secured your spot. That is fantastic. And here you go. Um, I'd love to share these words with you from Dina. 
Hi everybody, my name is Dina. I took this course about last year. I have only good things to say about Chaya Hind Allen's course. It was truly a life-changing experience for me over the course of last year, and it continues to affect every single day of my life, even now. Um, this course has reinvigorated all of Yiddishkeit to me. It was like, it was like becoming a fresh Balchuva in a way. I mean, it's like a Shalom Bayis class and a Chanuch Banim class and an Emuna and Bitachon class, an intuition and psychology class, all rolled into one. For me, this class also taught me a really important lesson, which is that our thoughts totally create our reality. That piece of information, if you can learn to harness it and control it and see that as an art form in and of itself, it can really change the game. The material Chaya Hind Allen gives over touches on every single aspect of life. She never repeats herself. The material is so unique, and each class is like a world unto itself. I've never heard anything like it. Not in the Froom world, not in the secular world. Chaya Hind Allen is totally brilliant, and I truly believe that she was born to give this over. No one could be more unpretentious and genuine as Chaya Hind Allen. And because of her, I think think her material, which is so brilliant, is given from the heart and it enters straight into the heart. I've pushed several of my friends to take this course as well, and they have all thanked me from here to the moon, <laughs> and they all have the same thing to say. It's really magnificent. Trust me, you will never look back once embarking on this tremendous journey towards a more positive, radiant, blessed, and loving life. I wish you all the best and Hatzlach and Bracha with uh, this beautiful endeavor. That was just so, so touching, so beautiful. I hope everyone was able to hear that as clearly as I was. Um, so thank you, Dina. I'm not sure if you're able to be here today, uh, but I hopefully you'll listen to the recording and you'll hear your wonderful um, testament to Chaya Hinda and her ability to really give over such amazing and life-changing and transformative information. So thank you to Dina and thank you to Chaya Hinda. Um, let me go ahead and get to some of these questions. If anyone has questions, um, I know we had some coming in earlier about the actual materials. I'd be happy to answer that. I do have some questions coming in about how to get into the course, so I want to make sure we answer those. We've only got a little bit of time left, and I don't want anyone to miss their opportunity to join. So let me go back and explain exactly what's included. I know that I went through some of the materials a little quickly. so. We do have eight weeks of interactive live classes, all taking place on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Israel time. And again, I know I've mentioned this, uh, they are all available as recordings afterwards that you can listen to and download at your convenience. Plus, when you become a Platinum member today, you can also get an additional live class on the Secrets to Effective Communication uh, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, email support direct to Chaya Hinda for the entire course. Um, so you can get your personal questions answered and let Chaya Hinda guide you hand in hand through the process. Plus Chaya Hinda also mentioned that she was going to be offering some phone time and Chaya Hinda opens her phone line for about an hour or two a day um, that we will give you the direct number to call and you can actually get uh, some of your questions answered that way as well. Uh, if that is not a convenient time for you then we offer this one-on-one -on -one email email support and Chaya Hinda takes so much time and energy and effort to really be there for you, to guide you, to be your support. There is not a moment that you are just left alone and hope that you can, you know, bring all of this information into your mind and understand it all on your own, but there is going to be time during each class. As we mentioned, there's guided imageries per class, so we're really going to be going on this journey where you're going to understand the material. I know there were some questions coming in about how do I believe, how do I get there, where, how do I get to even that level before I can believe and trust and hope, and we're going to be taking you into such a depth of information that you'll really have all of that in front of you, plus this online support. Also, as I mentioned, the guided imagery is in the dream book. The dream book is one of my favorite things. It's absolutely brilliant, and it helps you put all of the things that are going on in your mind out on paper, putting it out there into the world, and watching these things really come to life is extraordinary and has definitely helped me. 
plus seven ways to touch eternity. Uh, it's going to be available on an MP3, an additional class, and again, a positive pace off. And your positive pace off class also comes with a guided imagery, so don't worry. You really can have a pace off that is stress free this year. And finally, we haven't offered this in a very long time, but we decided to bring it back for this special course, an extra seat in the course for a family member or friend. So not only will uh, the Platinum membership include your ticket, but you can also share that with a friend, and your friend who you decide to invite to join along will also get the additional bonuses. So all of those things are available to you in two special programs. Either you can become a basic member, for $347 today, you get that additional $50 discount just today because you decided to attend. Or you can become a Platinum member and get the eight-week course plus all of the additional bonuses, including an extra seat in the course for a friend, plus the email support direct to Chaya Hinda all for only $447. And again, as I mentioned, payment plan options are available. And let me just go ahead and show that to you. I don't want anyone to miss this opportunity, and I don't want anyone to have questions that I didn't cover. So let me go ahead and show you how we can actually get there. This is going to be what you see um, when you go to jewishworkshops.com forward slash mind. And you can go ahead and scroll down you'll see all of the different um, bonuses that we just went through and you'll see the different options you can either become a basic member or a platinum member and then you just click on the register now button and it'll take you to the registration page right down here you have all of your payment plan options so if you decided that you wanted to go ahead and pay in three payments then you'll only be paying $149 today, and then it actually even gives you a calendar of how your payments will come out. So your next payment of $149 will come out in March. The following one will come out April 9th. That way you can mark it down. You'll be able to budget um, the way that is convenient for you. So I wanted to go ahead and just show you how to do that. Now please note also, in this final due um, price, it still says the 447, that is the total price, but when you pick your payment plan option, whichever best fits your needs, that's the price that you'll be paying today. So I hope that that helped answer anything. And if you still do have questions, please just come on back and let me know. I'd be happy to answer any of them. So Chaya Hinda, I do think that we had some questions coming in. I want to make sure that we get to as many as possible before we have to close out here in a little bit. Um, where did this question go? <laughs> Chaya Hinda, I'm a hopeful soul, so my nature is to hope for the best. But after the disappointment, time and time again, I have such a hard time allowing myself to hope. How do I change my expectations? So again, I don't want you to change your expectations. For, for Ashley, I want you to change the word. We don't expect. Hoping is not about expecting. Hoping is about anticipating. Looking forward to it, but not expecting it. And that's a very important distinction. If I'm expecting it, then of course I'm going to be disappointed if it doesn't come about. But if I'm anticipating it, not knowing that for sure it's going to happen, but that hoping that it's likely, I can look forward to it, then if it doesn't happen, I could still feel disappointed because it was something that was meaningful to me. I will be disappointed if it doesn't come through, but I won't be broken because I, would, I know from the beginning that there's still always the chance, because I'm not running the world, that Hashem's going to have a different version than me. That's always a possibility when I'm hoping. But again, as you'll remember from our, our little thing over here, okay, that if I'm hoping, a very big hope, then if I find that I'm feeling very crushed, if my hopes didn't come true, it's because I need to upgrade my belief and my trust. And that's going to help me to be able to have a safe way to hope. If I want to have hopes that feel safe, then I need to build them on trust, which is built upon belief. There's no other shortcut. It's not about, you. I mean, of course, if you have this much belief, and this much trust, then you have to shrink your hopes down to this size, right? Then you can't allow yourself to have very big hopes if you haven't got enough belief and trust to hold it up. But if you have, if you let yourself and spend time to mindfully create more belief and more trust, 
then your hopes are not going to feel so dangerous, even if they're very big ones. So it's not about changing expectations. It's about not expecting, but anticipating, hoping, not expecting, and building hope on top of belief and trust. So that the hope is not going out on a limb, but that the hope is actually firmly established. It's the natural next step. If we have a, a dear friend who has always been there for us, and we just know this person is good and, is, and, and, and has my best interest in mind and that they really love me and care for me, and they actually happen to be loaded as well, <laughs> then if I need actually to borrow some money today, it's, it's fairly reasonable that I could hope they could lend me the money. Right? It's based on my trust and belief. But if there's someone that I don't know if they have any money, I don't know how they feel about me, um, I don't really know them at all, then I'm not going to have much hope that they're going to be able to help me out. So it's really very practical to have belief and trust and then be able to add on hope onto that. It's a very natural progression to be able to hope once we have belief and trust. In fact, it's not even hard to hope once we have belief and trust. It's going to be a very natural step. We won't find that we need to work too hard on it. Oh, Great. Nice. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, I do want to go ahead and just welcome some new members. Samantha, welcome. Esther, welcome. Diane, wonderful to have you. Welcome Karen and welcome Sheva. It's so great to see this community continue to grow with women from around the world. Thank you so much. Uh, going to go ahead and put that link in the chat box one more time to make it easier for you. You can just copy and paste that into your own browser and make sure you secure your spot at this special price again. Um, Hi, Hinda, we had some more questions coming in. What if you tell yourself to believe something? Um, what? if you tell yourself something that you don't really believe, will it still work? Okay, so the process is like this. In the beginning, we don't believe it, but we decide we would like to believe it because we believe, because we think this would be a good empowering belief. And we do recognize that it's true. We recognize that there's truth in it, and then we decide, I want to believe this, I don't presently believe it. That's the way we always begin. That's the way we work always we have to start from that from that point of view and then we begin to talk and we begin to talk ourselves into belief and gradually we will get to believe it so yes of course we always begin if we didn't if if we believed totally then there would be no need to talk myself into it the only reason why i have to begin in the first place is it is because there's something lit missing in my belief and by the way there are so many levels of belief that there's always going to be more that I can work, talk myself into and, and learn more about. There's, the the Svas Emma says that there is no limit to levels of the regeshim, of the feelings of imuna in Hashem. So it's not a failing to not have perfect belief because there's always more to do. But having said that, it's very important we also know when we say the animamins, we say animamin be'emuna shalema, that I do have imuna shalema. So isn't that a contradiction? I have, how can I say I have Imuna Shalema? And the answer is, within me, within my soul, I do have Imuna Shalema, but I have to bring it out into conscious belief, that which is only in potential within me. The potential for Imuna Shalema is within me. My Nishama knows Imuna Shalema. It knows perfect faith. And when I talk, that's why we have to say, I do believe through talking it out, I get to believe it more and more. So that's the, the basis of why we say the animam is in the first place, in order to talk ourselves into the belief that we want to feel. So absolutely 100%. We begin by not believing, and then we talk ourselves into believing, and yes, it works. Excellent. Thank you. As we go ahead and wrap up, I do want to welcome our newest members. Welcome Sherry. Welcome Shoshana. And welcome... <coughs> But Sheva, again, it is wonderful to have all of you women from around the world. I love to see this uh, 
unity come together and people are just saying how do I get in how do I get in so I have the link still up on your page and I do notice that women are still having a little bit of difficulty um, some with the link so please just continue to put your names and telephone numbers in uh, we will get to you as quickly as possible um, so again stay by your phone if I can't get you get to you today we will try again tomorrow but we definitely want to be able to get you in and we want to get you the right price so um, and yes I know that it looks like Linda you were asking again about the payment plans there are payment plan options available just click on the register now button on the page and you will have those options available to you so hi Hinda as we're closing up here um, and I will go ahead and leave the webinar open for just a couple minutes after we're finished so that you can get time to put in your name and telephone number if you need to. But I'd love to just turn the microphone again back over to you just um, for some parting words. You know, how would you like to leave everybody today? I would like everybody to know that you have incredible power within yourself that Hashem didn't put us into this world to confuse us and to, to make trouble. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us within ourselves incredible strengths, power, um, and He gave us keys and He wants to use them. He wants us to make a difference with our faith, with our trust, with our hope, with our positive thinking, with using our mind to create the feelings that he wants us to live with. Hashem himself, it says, Oiz v'ched v'bim k'aymai, Kaddish Baruch Hu, himself, there's, a, there's some kind of a simcha, some kind of happiness that Hashem lives with up there. And that when we down here enable ourselves to live with happiness, with simcha, Hashem responds by giving us even more simcha. The Zohar says this, that when a Jew goes down here with happiness, he brings down blessing upon himself some of that blessing is going to be in health and healing and others, other parts of that blessing will be in, in, in other kinds of success that we want. But it's up to us to make that choice. And really this is the, this is the message that I would like to, to, to leave you with this evening, ladies, and, or today, this afternoon, for the ladies who it's the afternoon, is that we can make a difference. And Hashem wants us to take, to take that, that effort to make that difference. We've been taught that no matter the effort that we put in, effort doesn't make the difference. And that is true. It's not the effort that we put in that makes the difference. We can work all day and not earn more money. Yet when it comes to the inner feelings, when it comes to the choices that we make in our minds, these do make a massive difference. And this is where we make the choice. When Hashem says, Bachar to Bachayim, choose life, the choice that we have is the way that we use our mind. And that's what we're going to be discussing. That's what we're going to be learning together. But as Hashem, how to make those choices in our mind that bring us real happiness, that bring us real peace of mind, so that we will not be living in that rat race anymore. And that even if there are still all kinds of things going on in our life, but we can sail through them in a calm happiness rather than getting bogged down and drawn and, and, and taken in and feel that we're drowning underneath all of them. The same things should be taking place, but we're going to be totally different. And when we're totally different, the chances are most likely that we'll also make a very big difference in that which is surrounding us. So we'll be able to really be empowered to help to ourselves to be the most healthy person that we can be. Look after the body that Hashem has given us, look after the, the, the soul and the mind that Hashem has given us. And then, as the Rambam says, one of life's goals is to be in the healthiest bodily state because we can't access and use all of our spiritual intellectual talents if we're not, if we're not healthy. So the first step is getting ourselves back into health, mental health, calmness, happiness, and then we're set up for life. Then we can begin, then we can do that which we came into the world to do without having to be distracted by all the doctor's appointments and therapy appointments. So let's take it into our own hands and have the tools to do it for yourself and not have to rely on other people. But as your session. Amen. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to have you. Uh, Janet sends her best regards and says, it's so incredible to even be able to see you on the web. You have such an incredible power within you. So thank you so much, Chai Hinda. Thank you, and we've gotten so many more thank yous now coming in. <laughs> thank you to all of you women who have joined us today. Thank you for being here. 
Uh, welcome to all our new members. If I missed welcome, saying your welcome, name, welcome. I'm so sorry, but I welcome you. Um, and I, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave this open for just a minute or two. You won't hear anything, but I will have it open so that at least you can put your name and your telephone number in if you have any more questions or need help registering. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.